Hi, I'm Anouez. I'm here on behalf of the European Data Portal at Support Center for Data Sharing. The European Data Portal is an EU initiative focused on supporting EU member states in publishing their open data and promoting open data's potential for reuse. And Support Center for Data Sharing is also an EU initiative that helps uh, organizations, both public and private, um, in sharing data between them and su offers support in terms of uh, technical uh, and legal issues. And today we are joined by Eva van Rooyen and Jasmine Karim to talk about Check the Facts. This is a decision-making tool that they developed for students on the basis of open data. Uh, and in a minute, I would like to give the floor to you um, and you can, uh, you can discuss the tool and you can show us um, on a more general note, I would like to ask everyone uh, to keep yourself on mute. And if you have questions, please feel free to raise your hand or type them in chat. And we can address them either intermittently or at the end in a more dedicated Q&A. Um, also, this session will be, will be recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel afterwards. So stay tuned for that. Um, Eva, Jasmine, I would like to give the floor to you. Thank you. Uh, I think I'll start with a, just a small introduction. So my name is Eva Varoya and uh, I'm working as a data manager for the Dutch Open Data Portal. Um, so we basically, we gather all the open data sets that are published by governmental institutions um, to sort of bring an overview of where people can find open data from governments. And um, we realized that, yeah, this tool is basically brought on because data can be hard to interpret and we'll get back to that later. Yeah. And uh, I should also introduce myself. I'm, <laughs> I'm Jasmine uh, Karim. I'm um, currently a Bachelor of Data Science student at the Technic University of Eindhoven and Tilburg University. Um, uh, during the project, I was an intern at, uh, at uh, the Central Bureau of Statistics in the Netherlands. I'm currently not anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, during that time, it was really an initiative to look at what you can do with open data uh, and um, uh, and uh, sort of bring it together in a uh, dashboard. It was very open for me, for my interpretation to make of it what I want. Um, and uh, check the facts, uh, the project I was working on was specifically about higher education, but you can also have check the facts on other topics. So uh, we, we worked on uh, uh, check the facts higher education specifically. So, um, yeah, we should uh, talk about the, I guess, the original plan because uh, initially it was very broad. Um, it was, uh, you know, I, I was told like, okay, we can have many stakeholders, you know, it could be policy, useful for policymakers. Uh, it could be, you know, even give some sort of predictive uh, use that, you know, you could sort of see uh, not only, you know, what is in the data, but what could the data imply uh, uh, for what, uh, the user could do in the future. Um, and also, I think a key element of it was using um, multiple data sources uh, and uh, bringing that together. And that was also a huge challenge, finding these uh, sources. You know, they were scattered online, but um, it, it, could, it was hard to find. Um, and also to do that in a limited time frame. I had six months for my internship, so developing this tool uh, was uh, a real challenge. Um, and it, of course, it was also a pilot project. It was the first check the facts project uh, of its kind. Um, so it, it really sh uh, formed a basis for future check the facts projects. Um, yeah, so that's basically, that was basically the original plan. It was very um, broad. Um, then I guess I can share my screen to sort of maybe already show you uh, the uh, application that I have. Yeah, okay. So, um, and I'll just talk over this uh, and then I'll explain in detail what everything is. Um, so, first of all, uh, when I started, when me and Eva uh, started, uh, as I said, it was very broad and we had to really focus on something. It couldn't just be, you know, oh, let's make an application for everyone that everyone can use and it's all about higher education. We really had to focus, okay, the user, who are we going to focus on? Uh, it can't be, um, oh, we thought about, you know, looking at policymakers, maybe uh, can this application be useful for universities? But in the end, we chose 
students and particularly students who are in high school, their last year of high school and interested in getting information uh, about going into higher education uh, and also bachelor students looking to either switch their studies or um, go into a, the master phase. And so maybe the sorry. Yeah? To clarify, like we in the beginning checked the facts was more like, OK, so we have all these data sets and you can use data to, to check some facts, to get some information, to make an informed decision about uh, anything, basically. And there is such an overload of data available that it might, might become difficult if you have one specific decision in your own life and you want to use data. And it can be a bit too overwhelming to go through all kinds of files and and, uh, and analyze data yourself. So that's what we also meant with all the kinds of options and stakeholders in the beginning. We really had to find one specific decision and then move on to finding the data set. So in this case, we chose like, yeah, okay, I want to go for a new study. Um, and then at the next stage, we actually went into all the possible data sets. So that's also the reason why you can apply this, like this check the facts tool for all kinds of other decisions as well, like buying a house, for example, or um, moving to another city or all kinds of decisions. Um, yeah, and then you can move. Yeah. Was there a reason you uh, chose to focus on the education sector specifically for this first check the facts uh, pilot? Um, well, the higher education uh, subject was just brought to me by my uh, by the person I was uh, working with at CBS. Uh, for me, the reason why I think it might have been uh, well, for me, it was easier, I guess, to work on something that was close to me. Uh, as an intern, I I'm a student, so I could easily, you know. Uh, uh, figure out what a user would want from such an application and help, I think, a lot. If it was something very unrelated, like, um, uh, or something that was very um, maybe tricky, uh, that I was maybe not, uh, I haven't experienced in my life before, uh, it might have been difficult and I would have needed to maybe do more phases of interviewing people, what they want, and uh, uh, and with the time frame, maybe that's why uh, higher education was chosen because it's uh, maybe easier for, for the intern for me to uh, work on it. So yeah, I think that's that's why. And I also uh, think that it has a nice potential for 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 example from a European standpoint, like that you could have um, the information you can gather the information for different schools, different universities, and bring it onto one tool because per country you have all different. Uh, prerequisites for study programs and if you would be able to make one tool where you can have study choice selector uh, for all these universities I think that would be interesting we will get back to that later as well because we it have might be the next one <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> type me <mini> version <laughs> yeah so um so yeah so then we found relevant data sets um I can show you a bit um we found uh, data from Duo, from um, OpenStreetMap, from CBS. It was really, um, uh, it, it, that took a while because process, we also found, um, for example, uh, a data set from uh, Studicosa 123, which is a website that currently exists for higher education purposes as well. It uses both open data and private data. Uh, so it was tricky to figure out, can we use this data set? Is this open data? That was a you know, part of the challenge using only open data. What can you create? Um, and uh, and we had to also take take keep in mind um, what are the user requirements? A student uh, and I did this through asking students as well. Um, what do you want from such an application? And they um, and I had to sort of find the intersection between what what the user wanted and um, what is actually available to use. Uh, and in the end, we, we found that the um, Duo data sets uh, and also some CBS data sets were really useful, um, which are the, you know, um, uh, Duo, it's like uh, the uh, government uh, organization within uh, for higher education. Uh, let's see. So then we found three areas that are, so the, from all these interviews with students, we found that there were mainly three areas that uh, you could sort of, so three pillars you could uh, put all their questions and interests in. 
One was student housing, which was really important when they're trying to make a decision on, you know, where do you go to, uh, to study? What do you want to study? Housing is a huge issue for them. Um, we found that, uh, of course, the education and everything that goes around it. So uh, what is the study like? All that stuff. Um, what are the statistics within the study? What, what can I know about the study? And also, what are the job market prospects, career opportunities after the study? Um, these were, you know, in um, within the pillar of education. And then lastly, um, more uh, general things such as uh, geographic locations. Uh, and this is what we have here and um, here. Uh, students wanted to know, OK, is there a bar in this? Are there lots of bars in the city? Is there lots to do? Uh, can I go out a lot with friends? Uh, how what's the connectivity like uh, if I want to live somewhere? Is it close? Can I um, easily commute to university? That kind of stuff. Um, this is all geographic data that you can uh, find online as well. So uh, these were sort of the three main ideas we had for it, and that's also what we based the application around. Um, let's see. Yeah, then also it took a while to uh, uh, a large part of it was gaining feedback as well. So. Uh, the initial version was quite uh, basic, and um, part of the journey was that we um, that we asked people to evaluate. One of ways one of the ways we evaluated was through the data communities platform, which uh, we got some feedback uh, every now and then. Uh, we posted updates of this prototype and um, uh, continuously received uh, feedback, which was really great and helped us improve it. Uh, to the state that it is now. Uh, we also so yeah, have lots of issues with the, like for example, if we have a visualization of a data set, and if you've been looking at the data for a long time, you think, oh, this is really clear. But then yeah. if you have put it on the forum, so you would put like, uh, what do you think is more clear, A or B? And um, people could just people can just vote or and leave feedback, and then you notice that one map with everything is not the best option to show the data actually. Yeah. Then we, for example, switch to these tabs you can see here in the study program, the job market and the analytics page to sort of tailor the tool to the phase of the decision students were in, for example. So yeah. in the programs phase, you have a very, really, really general overview, for example, in this matrix, this table in the, at the bottom, um, what study programs there actually are. And then the job market for one specific study or a few specific studies, what would be the um, the effects or your chances on the job market? So you can kind of guide them, guide them through this decision making process. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, maybe also now to explain a bit more in depth what everything is because we gave a bit. Um, um, yeah, so the filtering aspect of it was super important. Uh, as you can see, like when I showed the, all the uh, installing SAM, which is the universities. Um, it's not really you can't really see what's happening. So filters are super important. Uh, we're super important part of this application. If you um, only care about universities that have, let's say, technique. As a student, you're a very technical student. Now you can already see that it's a little you can see at least the names of the universities and, and so forth. So if a student would like to um, uh, filter on this. Uh, this is from all from the data set uh, sets that we've combined uh, also with the years. Um, and there's also an overview uh, uh, image with a stream plot that lets them sort of uh, easily see how the numbers have changed over the years. Um, and this was really utilizing what was in the data set, uh, fully utilizing what we received from the data set. Um, so that um, that was that. Then, as Eva mentioned, uh, we have the study programs table. Um, you can print it, uh, search for particular topics. Like I like to look for data science, and so I have all the uh, rows with uh, data science in it. I can see my study. Uh, <laughs> then um, the useful locations. This is just the where your university is. This includes both the research universities and the applied science universities in the Netherlands. 
Um, you can also search for a location. And also this is uh, what I mentioned earlier. You know, students would like to know where the bus stops are, where the library is, maybe where a supermarket is, universities. Uh, and here they can uh, uh, look up the city they're interested in. Um, yeah, so that was this, uh, this tab. Um, as you can see, there's also a matrix tab, uh, which uh, we never actually completed. Uh, and I'll talk, we'll, we'll talk about more about what that could mean for the future. But essentially, uh, we would wanted to add a Dorstrom matrix, uh, which is essentially a uh, prerequisites for each program. This data set does exist somewhere, I think under the Federation of All Universities in the Netherlands, where you can see the prerequisites for each program. Uh, so for example, if you want to go from bachelor to master, this is where you can see it, but you could also do this for a high school, uh, what kind of background you have in high school, which packages you have, and see uh, for each university program, um, am I even, can I even go to this university? This is probably very useful information for students, so they don't have to go through a lots of websites and just see one visualization. Um, I see there's a question from the audience. Um, is it only for data from the Netherlands or are you considering to do it in a wider scope or other member states? Yeah, so um, initially actually, so this is all uh, just from the Netherlands. Um, initially when this was brought up in the original plan, uh, there was a lot of talk about, yeah, we could do this also for across the border. So there's a lot of Dutch students also study in Germany or German stu students study in the Netherlands mm -hmm. or Belgium. So they thought they could, uh, we could also expand this to other countries uh, eventually. Um, but yeah, because of the limited time frame, uh, we focus mainly on the Netherlands, <laughs> mm -hmm. especially because the um, data sets would be different. We would be working with, so um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we'd have to combine like different languages and different um, systems with different ways of doing things, which mm -hmm. I think is doable, but it would have taken a lot more time. And I think uh, that's something for the future. Yeah, I also think that the whole process of choosing what we want to show and how we want to visualize the data and how you want to combine these three pillars of information, basically that you want to know when you make this decision. So the housing, job market, the study availability. I think that whole process already took almost all the six months. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> that once you have sort of this format, so we want to combine all this information, then a big challenge would be to get all the data. So for example, just for uh, door stromatics, like we mm -hmm. just discussed, it's already difficult to uh, to get the data for the Dutch universities actually, because yeah. it's so complicated. Like you can enter the study program with this study, but you can also enter it with this study with these courses and it becomes very tricky. Uh, so if we would find an, a way to get that data um, efficiently, then I think the tool would be really good to yeah. um, do this. That's well, already a very good tool. It's very it's super clear. Um, I think it gives a lot of information as well. Um, Jasmine, the reason you said filters were important is because if not, you get all of the data parsed into it, right? So it becomes yeah. not so visible. Yeah, okay. So it's just the amount of data that makes it hard. So pretty much yeah. everything's on there if you, use, if you don't yeah, use filters. Exactly. You get information overload. Uh, when... Yeah. Because when we asked, actually, we asked people um, as an evaluation of this um, at the end, uh, you know, did you learn something new? And, you know, there were some issues. So they, you know, like, for example, it's a prototype. Uh, this could be better. Or that could be better. But uh, when I asked, um, did you learn something you didn't know before? I think almost everyone said yes. And they had never known that uh, this data set even existed. Um, so I think that's. First of all, they're not going to search for it because they don't know how to search for it, but also even if they had it in front of them, I don't think they would have looked through it because all the uh, information is just in a giant table and you can't really see anything. And I think data visualizations really uh, help with the communication. I think the data exists, it's just about communicating it to people and uh, this is one way to do it. Um, yeah. yeah, if you don't see it, you, you're not going to know it's there. Um, I think, uh, especially like having been a student in this country myself, I mean, it's a lot of navigating back and forth on what you need and what's out there. 
Yeah. So uh, this is a beautiful way to visualize it and make it a lot clearer. Do you see a lot of uptake from the tool, uh, not so much for students, but for policymakers? I think you mentioned it in the beginning. Yeah, so for that we have the analytics tab. It's just that it's also not the most developed part of the tool. Yeah. But uh, we realized that all the data that is behind this app, like if you visualize it, then you can really help students make a decision because you visualize the data in an interpretable way. Uh, but the same data set is used for policy research. Like, for example, the number of students who are in, uh, who subscribe to a study program. Well, when they introduced the new loan system in 2015, there was a big sort of uh, debate about, oh, would that decrease the number of students? And actually, if you look at the data for the number of students registered per year, you can analyze that question and you can um, also visualize the results of that. So also another extension of this tool would be the to also visualize the policy research from the education data. So for example, this is just a minor example of the effect of the loan system. But a lot of research has been done on this data set. And we think that by incorporating the research also in the tool, you might have another sort of dimension um, that could be interesting as well. So if you look at this figure, it seems like there's no effect of the loan system at all, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's a shocking discovery. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, there's been an increase. <laughs> More people go to university. But um, yeah, that's also what we said, I think, in this. Like, you can't really, um, I think, uh, with someone with a, with a background in statistics, you would know, you know, you can't really imply anything from it because um, you don't really have any causal, causal um, information here. So that's why um, you know we never really made other plots because we were so focused on these study programs. Uh, but you could do some sort of analysis and sort of show, um, sort of a, do an investigation on uh, how to best answer this question and yeah. uh, what might have caused this increase uh, if it's not the uh, loan system changing. Adjustment, you showed. Um um, so on the on the full overview of the dashboard sort of view, um, at the bottom you said um, you also monitor job opportunities. Yeah, that's uh, how does that work? Uh, so the job opportunities we have here in this tab actually recently uh, added it. Um, this wasn't in the previous version, which I showed uh, in January. Um, but uh, yeah, I just used um, CBS data. It had the same, uh, so what was nice was that it had the same, uh, so for example, COHO code, which is the uh, like area of study, which you also find um, here as well in this data set from uh, Duo. And in this way, you could um, also look, this is per study lifting, you could have different options. But in this way, you could sort of uh, connect uh, that data set with this one showing uh, maybe not per study program, but per area of study, uh, what the uh, job, um, uh, how many people uh, graduated from this job and how many uh, from, from this, how many people got a job within, let's say, a month, how many people got a job within two months from these different um, uh, backgrounds, uh, and also per year, you can see the progression. Um, I think this plot I would still need to further develop because I, I had some ideas, but I, uh, because I don't work at a CBS anymore, I'm not really actively working on it now. But um, in in this way, you can really you, you can see how uh, it would be possible to uh, connect through the Croho code uh, the Duo data set, which is about individual programs and um, and the CBS data set about uh, job market opportunities. What did you find to be the biggest challenge in developing this uh, this dashboard? Uh, so many challenges. Uh, I think it was really just um, because I was uh, very um, normally when you do these kinds of projects, um, you do them in a team setting, um, and you you know have like it or every week you know you have a meeting, and then everyone sort of goes their own way and comes back at the end of the. Week. We didn't really have a team. It was really me and Eva working on it and me doing the developing. Eva really um, 
looking at the communication aspect of it and, and how to best uh, sort of package this. And uh, that was really hard doing it, I think, just with the two of us and doing it online and, uh, and uh, you know, in the pandemic, uh, not being able to uh, go in person. That was really difficult. And I think the second thing that was also super difficult was finding data. Finding data was surprisingly very, very difficult. Usually in my previous projects, someone would just give me a data set and tell me to work with it. Now I really, you know, I got some uh, indications like, oh, you could go here and you can go there, but it was very open. And uh, the difficulty was going through each and every data set and figuring out how much value can this data set add. You know, some data sets are very simple and very, um, uh, generalized so you can't really connect it with other data sets you have and there's not really any um, way to connect those data sets and uh, take value from it um, in this particular setting uh, so that was really difficult finding data sets that uh, can be combined and are relevant to the user that took probably the most time even more than developing the app because you used CBS data and Duo data, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, I used uh, Duo data. So this is the Inschrijvingen for VO. This is the write-ins for VO. They had more data sets. There were slight differences between them, but I just decided on this one between 2015 and 2019. Mm -hmm. Then I have the addresses of the universities and uh, CBS uh, data for our uh, labor market position. Before I had the labor market position, I also used uh, Viking and Burton for student housing. Unfortunately, there was no that that was sort of a limitation of this um, project was that student housing data is awfully difficult to find um, because it's uh, you have general reports about student housing, you don't actually have and you have uh, data on housing in general, like with Viking and Burton. Which is, uh, doesn't really discriminate between a normal resident and a student resident. Um, but finding, I found that student housing data is difficult because uh, um, you, to, in order to differentiate between a normal uh, citizen and a student citizen, um, you need to um, uh, uh, go through the personal data of everyone and then making a, an open data set from that uh, to, to so, like to differentiate between the two people, you would need uh, to go to each person's like BSN and like, yeah, so that would be difficult to make into an open data set, I think, or not necessarily difficult, but it would uh, require an effort. And uh, also it's difficult to identify where students are living because students don't always, you know, tell the government where they're living. Sometimes, you know, they are still written in with their parents, but they have a, a room somewhere. So. Um, that was really tricky, um, but that's fine. Uh, I then replaced it with um, the labor market position data set, um, which I think has equal value and uh, hopefully in the future more student uh, housing data becomes available. I also use, by the way, OpenStreetMap, which is awesome. It's not government made, but it's uh, open source and uh, I think it could be useful for everyone in an open data project. Yeah, tying into that open source aspect, um, is this open source? Can people uh, improve on the code? Can they add stuff? Yeah, so uh, the code uh, for this is uh, actually on my GitHub, which I have uh, here. I still need to update it to the most recent version. Um, but um, yeah, they, I think they can, uh, they can do what they want with my code. I'm not sure. Um, uh, so it's on my GitHub. I don't know where um, CVS or uh, that sort of overhype will have it. Uh, mm -hmm. However, we do have a page uh, on site data communities where you can see uh, the Shiny app. This was written, by the way, in our, sh our Shiny. Um, and hopefully there's a way that we can communicate over it. There's also a forum here. This is also where we got some feedback where people can uh, comment and uh, give suggestions, but also uh, maybe upload uh, code. Thank you for showing that. 
Do you see any uh, other uh, applications um, in light of this in the future? Um, apart from like making it European uh, and checking higher education uh, across the board, um, do you also see maybe applications in health? Um, something similar but COVID related perhaps? Uh, yeah, I, I do, definitely. What I do have though that I learned from this experience, especially when we're talking about healthcare, um, uh, open data by nature is of course open. You can't have uh, something personal and medical data, of course, is, can be very uh, personal. Uh, what I noticed as well as something students wanted was, you know, I want to know about uh, student personal experiences uh, so that in nature you can't really, uh, with open data, that uh, unless the person themselves would post it, uh, you can't have a personal experience uh, of someone. I think with healthcare, you do have open data sets, though, um, that are, uh, for example, mental health. I think there's a lot of mental health surveys now in times of COVID that I saw uh, where you could really uh, find useful applications. Um, so I do think this can be a sort of basis, a sort of proof of concept for future um, uh, open open data, open source applications that uh, want to know, okay, um, what are the what what are the limitations first of all of uh, doing something like this? Uh, what can you do? But also, uh, what is possible? And I I hope uh, this this will give uh, people in the future ideas on on what to do with open data. Yeah, this is definitely a great example. Um, I hope this can uh, inspire others to do similar things. Um, I would like to, as we have ten minutes left in our meeting, I would like to open the floor to the audience to ask questions. You can either raise your hand, type in chat, or just unmute yourself and start talking. So I just share the link just for after the podcast if people want to review the code. Uh, we'll put it on GitHub and uh, make sure that it's, yeah, and leave your feedback, improve the code. Um, We'll have to figure out a way because especially if we want to take this broader than just higher education. Um, also, feel free to suggest a topic or a decision where people can use data. And you're like, hey, this actually could be cool to apply to that part as well. Then, yeah, yeah. we can do it. What is next for both of you right now? So, um, I was understand, Jasmine, you no longer work at uh, CBS, um, but what? Yeah, what is next in your funnel following this great application? Well, I actually just just started uh, an internship at Microsoft, so uh, I'm in my last year of my bachelor and I wanted to learn as much as I can sort of uh, when I can. Uh, and uh, I'll see how that goes so that, you know, I'm quite open about my future and uh, I'll go where where uh, whatever happens, so, so to speak. But um, I do still want to do uh, a master um, after this. Um, I'm not sure where yet, but uh, that's sort of my um, my uh, goals. And I also I really like the like doing a project like for even though this was for uh, CBS and for Cope, I also felt it was for me like oh this is my project. So I really like that. I'd like to do more projects like this in the future. Franco, go ahead. Uh, thanks, thanks first of all for 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 being with us uh, today as well. I, I had the privilege to see the app in a preview back in January, so I'm very glad to see how it has, let's say, uh, fixed the sharp corners, complemented what was missing, and so on. Um, and I wanted to build on a question that Immaculata from the Publications Office made earlier about exporting the project or make it uh, reusable uh, across. Uh, European Union. And again, without uh, asking you to do the work for free, I wanted to remind you that there is something called the EU Datathon that yeah. is a sort of a competition from the, um, the Publications Office for uh, data related projects, prototype, inventions, ideas. And if you don't want to do it in your spare time, you may do it as an application to, to that. And that may be quite a nice way to, to invest more in this and make it portable and potentially give it in the hands of, of the Commission for further maintenance, perhaps, if you like. I, I don't know 
how easy it is. Actually, this is a good question for Eva, perhaps. How easy it is to um, find opportunities to collaborate internationally when you have in your hands uh, a prototype or a product like this that could work for others as well? Yeah, good question. <laughs> now, I really think that these tools, uh, once you have sort of the layout of the tool, so that indeed was something we spent a lot of time about, like, okay, if we have it on the left the sidebar and then you filter and then you move sort of through the screen, how can you sort of approximate the, the actual decision? And But then once you have that, it doesn't matter if you have in students from uh, Belgium or the Netherlands or France or whatever, it's just a problem of getting the correct data. I think that that will be the biggest challenge. So we'll have to contact either data portals because I saw that quite a lot of European countries have their own data portal. So they probably have the similar data sets. It's just that Duo then is really a Dutch institution and you probably have to find yeah. the French version of, of Duo, for example, to get the same data. Um, but yeah, I really think it will be cool to continue the project. Mm -hmm. Or you may crowdsource the contribution. So the even because we we always think from the idea of top down, perhaps yeah. in, in your case you work for government. So I need to find the data. I need to go and knock on a hundred doors to <laughs> find. Oh, I, like, I thought maybe for the for the for example the doorstep matrix we need data on. Okay, if I have this study, can I then also attend this master's for example if I have this background? But if you would have a general form where universities can just submit their data and their prerequisites and then it will be updated. I, I haven't thought about like if it's the most valid way, but in my opinion it would be the most efficient way because then yeah. slowly but surely you just build this tool and then if it's not true, like if somebody runs into something that it says that they can actually enter the master and then they get an email like you're not applicable, <laughs> then oh. <laughs> that, that would be an interesting one. It's a classic example of someone yeah. ending up into a ditch following GPS uh, search. Lab. You told me to to study, I don't know, the autonomy of frogs, and now I'm without a job. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Like your tool told me to do this study and told me that I was applicable, and now it's really hard and I wasn't actually applicable. So, uh, your fault. <laughs> so we did not, I did not plan for this, but actually, it's, a, it's an interesting aspect you touched there because the more we open. Uh, um, let's say uh, uh, calling it a product feels strange, but let's say a product like this for to uh, contributors of data, the more we may wonder about the liability of it. So are we providing advice? Uh, are we making it very clear that the data does not come always from CBS, but perhaps from independent sources? Um, so instinctively, and I'm talking as an individual here, not as the uh, as for someone in the team uh, for the European Data Portal, I would say, that it can be managed. Perhaps it, 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 even just visually, warning that when, for example, imagine this diagram you have on screen now, if it was including also data that was crowdsourced, it may simply have a disclaimer of some kind saying, yeah. these results, this forecast, these numbers come from also data volunteered by, say, uh, someone, and click here to see the contributors. I would prefer the data to go out rather than uh, let's say losing an opportunity because we cannot find an official source, but that's me. What, yeah, what? I, I agree actually. Yeah, I can see that. You could probably, as long as the communi you communicated effectively to the user that um, what the source is and uh, how much they should uh, take it seriously, so to speak, and how the, it's not a it's not a tool that tells you what to do. It's a tool that. Uh, um, informs you a little bit better, hopefully. That's, I think, also the biggest challenge with communication of data. It's like, okay, so we have actually on one end, you could say, okay, we have all kinds of open data sets that are about education. So if you want to have, if you want to make a decision about your education, use the data. Well, that's not really available. That's not really easy for people to do. So that's why we make this application to make the data more interpretable. But then the other end would be that there would be sort of an, a study advisor robot person, and that would not be good, I think. I think you would really have to stick to the data, visualize it, and it's the same with the analytics step. Like we can visualize the graph of the number of students before and after the, the loan system. Um, but then the final conclusion is not really a data visualization. Then you would need to have a model, and if you have a proper model, if you know which models are uh, applicable to answer such a question, then you can have a discussion, for example, about it. But this was a big, I think, unanswered question of this project in the end. Like, where is the line between uh, presenting information visually and 
drawing conclusions from the data. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a very good point. I mean, sometimes yeah. uh, we call it the difference between uh, data driven decisions and data informed decision. And, and sometimes in industry, we see a bit too much, let's say, bias towards the first because we expect this kind of magical AI taking decision for you and then I'm done, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, again, as a humanist, I don't know. I, I have a feeling that as we are saying, decisions like that are so much impactful on a life that you want to be as informed as possible, but ultimately you probably don't want a machine to take a decision for you. You also, you cannot really quantify the optimization criterion, sort of like if you have well, kind of a simple, well, maybe not simple, but if you have a process where you're really clear on the restrictions and the optimization goal, then you might use a model or like optimization algorithm to say, okay, then I have to do A or B. But for such a decision as your, your, your study and the place where you want to study and the people with whom you will be studying, for example, it becomes way too complicated. So to have yeah. some information from data is helpful and then there's also a big part that's just yeah. I agree, yeah, completely, yeah. And uh, that's also part of, I think, uh, part of the personal experiences of students. That's what, what I remember uh, clearly from uh, what people told me is like, yeah, um, when you think about where you want to study, it's a lot of it is very personal, uh, uh, personally motivated. And uh, also what you hear from, let's say, an aunt who studied there or a friend who studied there, that kind of information you can't really capture that in open data, uh, and uh, well, I, I at least I don't know how to. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. So, <laughs> maybe you can. I just don't know how to. But um, yeah, so uh, that part, um, unless there's some open source way where people can share their experiences, um, uh, you don't really, um, you won't be able to get the full picture of. Uh, of the decision making process. Yeah. And again, we go, we go back to the crowdsource element of it that yeah. can be managed, I believe, but yeah, but it it's a complement, it's a natural complement of everything you described. Um, and 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 I believe there there is more work coming also from the European Data Portal in this space. I don't think we can talk about this yet, but um, you know, over the next six years there will be also some of these elements. And also in, in the team we have uh, Professor Elena Simpel. Um, probably said, I said it wrong, but simple, who uh, for many years has been researching how to crowdsource data. Uh, so that actually is a meta suggestion for my team in, in the call. Perhaps we, we can actually invite her to talk about that specific part of research. So how to make crowdsource data credible. And you won't believe there are actually statistical methods just for that, that were developed for social sciences. So how can you trust, uh, say, a series of people being interviewed on a topic because they may naturally lie or be wrong. There, there are statistical methods to actually filter out the bias, the oh. mistake, and so on. That's quite cool. That's interesting, yeah. That could be used definitely in the future if it's uh, for such projects. Okay, thank you. Jasmine, Eva, I would like to thank you very much for being with us today and presenting the tool. Uh, I think it was super interesting. I'm very glad, um, uh, very happy to have hosted you. Um, the recording will be on YouTube afterwards, I will let you know, uh, but it will also be promoted on our, on our um, Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter channel, so you can stay tuned for that. Uh, I would like to thank the audience as well for attending today and asking questions, um, and let's stay in touch. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you very thank much. You. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.